Here at the Columbus Zoo, walking up to the Grand Carousel. Apparently, it's really old, like from 1914. These horses are so beautiful. Remember hopping onto the merry-go-round as a kid? Hands sticky with ice cream, head dizzy with excitement as you grab the painted horse circling around and around. Erica Miller remembers riding the Columbus Zoo merry-go-round when she was little. Her mom, Karen, took her there often. The first time I'd go around, that's cool. You know, I'd sit there and, oh, we're on a merry-go-round. And then I'd start looking up to see how it worked. Erica was more concerned with gears than ponies, and her mom noticed it right away. She had the mechanical in her, but she just didn't realize it, I think. And then, like she said, going to the zoo, you know, all the kids, yay, let's go to the merry-go-round. And she was, let's go to the merry-go-round. How's that work? When we're little, sometimes our family or friends will notice things. Say a love for reading, an interest in bugs, or a knack for arguing. They'll say stuff like, I can see her as a lawyer one day, or he'd make a great doctor. The path to these careers seem tidy. Your carousel horse soars through grade school, high school, college, then maybe medical school or graduate school until you finally dismount from the ride ready for the job. But there are lots of careers that don't follow that plan. I'm Leticia Wiggins, and this is Rivet, the podcast from WOSU Public Media, where we talk about the different ways of getting to work. Each episode looks outside the more conventional routes to good jobs, options that don't necessarily require college or graduate school. According to a 2015 report, there are 270,000 open jobs in Columbus. They can pay up to $22 an hour and don't require a four-year degree. These are skilled jobs in growing industries that continue to go unfilled. Here at Rivet, we're asking why, and investigating the barriers that are keeping people from good jobs that pay. Now back to Erica. She grew up with an interest in tinkering with things. But when she was a kid, her ideas about work consisted of the jobs that she knew about. Growing up, you know, everyone wants to be a veterinarian or a doctor or whatever. And I did that most of the way up to middle school. This is the thought, right? When we're little, we read about these jobs in our cardboard picture books and see them played on TV shows. It was an early experience with robotics that first connected the dots between Erica's love of mechanics and a possible career in engineering. And then I was on a first LEGO League robotics team that was through Girl Scouts, so it was an all-girls team. And we worked through two seasons together, which was great. Um, but that's really what got me started on engineering and thinking, hey, I can do this. I like working with the robots. I should find something that I can do that's related to this. Once these interests develop, how do we turn them into a career path? Erica knew she wanted to work with robots, but didn't know where or even how. When she approached her high school counselor about her interests, she didn't find much help. We had one counselor that kept pushing for a four-year college, no matter what you went to talk to her about four-year college. And then she tried to steer me more towards a teaching role because women should be teachers or secretaries or... Is this something she told you or something you were like, okay, this is what you're implying? The more I talked to her, the more that that was pretty much where, because she kept pushing me towards, well, maybe you should be a math teacher or an art teacher or... No, <laughs> that's not where my interest is, so. Erica's heart wasn't in teaching. She had heard of a two-year program at a local community college with a focus on engineering and brought it up to her counselor. Erica's mom says the high school counselor wasn't interested in helping her pursue that option. When she found out that, the, well, I'm interested in a two-year college, it was like, oh, well, look up on the internet, honey, it'll be fine. And that's not how she wanted to do. We found out my high school guidance counselor wasn't going to be much help. They didn't know much about two-year colleges. They didn't really want to know much about two-year colleges. They wanted four-year degrees. At that point, that's when they were like, just look it up online? Yeah. So at that point, it's like, well, maybe I should find an advisor at a two-year college that can at least point me in the right direction. So, why didn't Erica's guidance counselor consider two-year programs a viable option? Part of the answer might be in how high schools are graded. U.S. News compiles a report of the top high schools, and the scoring is based on the number of kids who go off to college. The more students prepared for a four-year degree, the higher the school's ranking. But some schools are reimagining their role focusing on connecting students with careers, not just colleges. 
Jody Robertson is the vice principal at Marysville STEM Early College High School. It's a school that wants to be more than just a stepping stone to college. Students have a chance to leave behind their classroom desks and step into the real world. Everybody wants to be a doctor, a teacher, but people they've had access to, you know? And so you go, okay, but like, go try, like, go be at a hospital for a while and make sure you don't like get sick at the sight of blood and that you don't mind being on your feet all day and that you don't mind wiping people's butts. And like, I mean, like, <laughs> but I mean, like, since you're like, we've had kids that they were like, oh my gosh, it was disgusting. I'm like, yeah, so like, let's maybe think about like, a different path for you. What made, what drew you to that? Is it, was it helping others? Was it, you know, what is it that made you, and let's figure out maybe something different and letting them experience early on. Jody urges her students to get their hands dirty and get real world experience. At Jody's school, students are given a unique opportunity to work with robotic arms, learn how to weld, and make 3D designs on the computer. The high school opened in 2014 and from the very start has partnered with companies who have a sense of what local industries need. One of these is Honda, the multinational car company with facilities in central Ohio. They work together to combat stereotypes of manufacturing as a dead-end job and keep the schools up to date with the company's most needed skills. Scott McLemore is a manager of talent acquisition at Honda North America. He's been working with Marysville Early College High School since the beginning. He says industries need to get involved. Educators are going to work off of uh, what they know um, unless someone comes in from the industry and exposes them to the new skills and knowledge that are required, you know, based on, on today's technology and, and today's production facilities. And helping schools teach skills in manufacturing helps Honda Marysville. The company projects that nearly three and a half million manufacturing jobs with Honda will open nationally over the next decade. Workers are desperately needed for these openings. Seeing manufacturing as something other than a dirty industry is essential at the high school level. Scott wants to give students a chance to redefine what success means to them. When I go to um, high schools and career centers, I, I talk a lot about what success looks like. And either students don't know at all, which is completely fine, or they have a specific idea of what success looks like, whether they've been told that by their parents, by peers, or by others, and many times that limits uh, the options that they consider. What we're trying to do, along with other manufacturers, is engage students and let them know that they're all different types of opportunities and career pathways. With Marysville Early College STEM High School's dual enrollment program, students can graduate with a high school degree and an associate degree from Columbus State with skills that make them competitive to enter good paying jobs at Honda. What we're wanting them to be aware of is that there are opportunities here at Honda, for example, in our equipment service technician pathway where you can um, go from a high school uh, or career center into a community college, complete a two year technical degree, finish that technical degree, and then have an opportunity to work for us in one of our manufacturing operations as an equipment service technician with the latest technology in robotics and automation, earning a great salary. Jody Robertson is showing me around one of the classrooms at her high school, equipped with three large robotic arms. She says her school is receptive to Scott's definition of success. Right, so we're really trying to like, just continuously like adjust and shift to like what the opportunities for kids are uh, to make a living, but also find the thing they love. And that's, that's always the trick. So then, the solution is in communication between industry and educators, educators and students. These connections are necessary for Honda to survive and for people like Erica to further their interests. But Erica did not have the benefit of attending a school like Marysville Early College STEM. She found her own path to success with the help of an academic advisor at Columbus State. The advisor suggested she enroll in the school's electromechanical engineering program. The two-year program included an internship at Honda, the result of another partnership between the company and Columbus State. There, she learned valuable skills that caught the attention of Honda suppliers Stanley Electric, who hired her shortly after graduation. This sort of awareness was lacking in Erica's high school experience. You know, I went through middle school thinking engineering, and then I got to high school and all this other stuff was thrown at me, and I thought, well, maybe not, maybe I have it wrong, but I'm glad I picked engineering because that's really where I've fit in. And Erica does fit in on the factory floor. At the Stanley Electric plant in London, Ohio, Erica works her usual third shift. She wears the standard navy blue jumpsuit and ball cap, 
eyes covered with safety glasses, a tool bag and computer tablet at her side. She walks us through the expansive factory. So this is Forklifts was by, and the smell of plastic is in the air. Machines, um, they set the part in here, it'll clamp up around the part. Then Erica's the title is Technician back, One. She fixes the machines that make headlights and taillights for car companies like Honda. At Stanley Electric, she makes $19 an hour. This is above the national average for someone her age, $13 an hour. This daily troubleshooting, figuring out how machines work, it fulfills Erica. And she'd also like her high school counselor to know that she's happy with her job. I mean, I've always been kind of a prove them wrong kind of person. If someone tells you you can't do it, if there's not a pretty good reason why, then why can't I? You know, if there's a safety issue or a good solid reason, but just because, well, that's a guy's job, that's not a good enough reason for me. And the fact that I've gone out there and I've succeeded, you know, I've got a job. I've got a pretty good job. And it's a stable job and it's something that I enjoy. High school is a launch pad to careers. It's where students determine their next steps. So the question is, what are the options that these students are seeing? Are they aware of all the alternatives? Are they getting the guidance that they need? As far as Erica and her mom are concerned, even though her path wasn't straightforward, she's on the right track. When she started Stanley, she was 20 years old, and she came home with the packet of, congratulations, you're an employee here. And she was going through all this, and she said, what? What do I do about a 401k? And I said, whatever they, they'll match put in it because 20 years old and she started a retirement. How do you feel about that? <laughs> I guess it's a good thing. <laughs> you know, it's not really something most, most 20 year olds are thinking about, but. Uh, not at all. Yeah. <laughs> You've been listening to Rivet, a podcast series that matches people and skills to in demand jobs. Rivet is produced by WOSU Public Media as part of American Graduate Getting to Work, a national initiative supported by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. We want to hear your story. Visit us at wosu.org slash rivet or email us at rivet at wosu.org. Rivet is written and produced by me, Leticia Wiggins, and edited by Michael DeBonis. Thanks for listening. Now get back to work. I think that's great. That makes me wince a little bit, <laughs> but pretty good. I like that sign off.